So just looking at a few verses again in, in the Esther, the book of Esther, we know it's a very, very well-known narrative. This young woman, Esther, has been brought to the place, this kingdom of Ahasuerus, the king. And it was in a situation where the Jews had been dispersed and this, this king Ahasuerus was king over 120 provinces, provinces from India right to Ethiopia. So it was a very, very big kingdom, very big area. But ultimately, it's amazing how God can place people right in the right place at the right time to intercede for his people. Because as many, many of the preachers and, and myself included, you know, God's only, God's only, as it were, is long suffering for towards this world tonight, is long suffering and and looking at all the sin and all the different things that go on in this world is only for one purpose. That's for his people, his chosen people. So God will go to great lengths for to redeem and to deliver his chosen people. And it's it's because of that as, as to why we're here tonight. We are, we've been delivered. We've been redeemed. There was a day when we didn't know the truth. We didn't know the Lord. But hallelujah, God worked out a time, the opportunity to speak to us where God had had opportunity to speak to us. You know, I'm going to look at Esther tonight because Esther, her name means a star. You know that, don't you? Her name means a star. I'm just going to take four, four letters very quickly for star. S for she shone in a dark situation at a very difficult time. And that's, that's what we're called to do tonight. You know, up until the up until the lockdown, you know, faithful brothers and sisters would go week by week, put leaflets through doors. Saturday night, we'd go to the open airs, we'd testify to God's amazing grace. But you know, when this world, everything's going okay in this world, and everything seems to be all right, there's no great disasters, there's no great problems happening nationally. People don't regard the gospel as anything important. They don't regard the gospel, the light that we bring, the light that we seek to bring, to shine into the situation of darkness. They don't regard it as anything special because you know fine well that we're, we're called to be lights in this dark world. John mentioned that last week about the light in the darkness. We're called to be light. We're called to shine the light of the Lord Jesus Christ at a dark, in dark situations. But you know, you even know in a natural way that you don't see stars during the day. You generally speaking don't see stars during the daylight because they're, they're masked by the light of the sun. And it's only when the light of the sun disappears that the stars start to appear. It's only when the, the, the natural light starts to abate that all of a sudden you start to see the glint, the, the, sh the stars shining in the background, dark background, and it's the same with the gospel. When this world is going okay, everything's fine. No great problems in people's lives. They're not worried too much. But you know something? See, whenever they try the things of this world and realize that they've exhausted them, just like when the sun starts to go down at the end of the day, the light of the sun starts to go down. And all of a sudden, it's just like when the doctors come to someone and say, there's nothing we can do. That's the light of this world abating, going down. That's the wisdom of this world saying, we've exhausted everything. There's nothing else we can do. And it's the same, it's the same situation for Esther. She's in a situation where Haman, Haman is an adversary of Mordecai in this passage. Haman really is a type of Satan or a type of the spirit of Antichrist who's out to destroy the Jewish people because he doesn't like them. He doesn't like their traditions, doesn't like, their, doesn't like the truth that they have. He doesn't like them. And that's the same for the Christian tonight. This world doesn't like the Christian. Oh, they'll, they'll listen to you and they'll say, well, that's nice for you, but I'll just, I'll just do my own thing. You see, it means nothing to them until the light of this world starts to go down and the dark reality the dark reality of problems and difficulties that they cannot control starts to come into their lives. And that's where we find ourselves tonight in this pandemic 
a situation that people are not in control of. Politicians are not in control of. People are not in control. And it's only then that when the light of this world, when they've exhausted it all, it all disappears, that all of a sudden they start to see the stars shining in the sky. It's only then that the relevance of the gospel starts to dawn on people. The relevance of God's truth starts to have a meaning starts to mean something to people. Up until that time, they don't care. They're quite happy doing their own thing. But only when they realize that the things of this world can't deliver them from their problems, then they start to think, I need to, maybe I heard that I heard somebody testifying about the Lord Jesus. I heard somebody, somebody's ill, somebody's not well. And I've heard that people have been healed through prayer. Then they start to ask for prayer. They start to ask for things that this world would not normally ask for. But because they've exhausted all the things that the world can do, now, now it's opportunity for the starlight, the light of, the, of eternity, the light of Jesus Christ to shine in and to make it be relevant to these people. It's then where we are tonight. You know, people are scared. People are worried about what's going to happen. People are worried about their jobs. Worried about, but hallelujah, we can tell them that we've got a saviour who's told us peace be unto you. Peace. He brings us his peace. He brings us everything he has and tells us not to worry. And everything by prayer and supplication, bring your requests, make, make them known unto God. And that's what we're going to do tonight. And, you know, Esther's a beautiful example of that. You know, she was going to shine in a dark situation. But, you know, see, what it, see, when, see when we're asked to shine, it costs us. You realise that, don't you? Every time, every day, uh, I know that the sun is continually shining. But every, every 24 hours, the sun loses part of what, what makes it up by all the nuclear explosions, fusion that's taking place on the, on the surface of, the, of the, the sun. And it's the same with the Christian church. Do you know that it costs you to shine? Something has to, something has to be burned up in our life to shine. And that's what the flesh is all about. God's got to burn up the flesh in us so that we'll shine. And it's when and when that happens, that's when God gets the glory. That's when we start to shine Christ, because that's what Jesus Christ did. And as we come to prayer tonight, you know, when we come to these prayer meetings, we've we've got to forget all about how we're feeling tonight. Because this isn't about how we feel. It's not about how I feel. It's not about how any of us feel. Yes, some of us are feeling tonight sad. And in in that, maybe, maybe our loved ones, I know Kenneth will be feeling it's a difficult situation for him, a situation where his mum's in hospital and others tonight, Peggy's in the hospital, Gail's in the hospital, different people in hospital, but we've got to trust God, that God knows all things and we've got to look to him tonight and we've got to trust him and we've got to hand everything over to him. You know, years ago, the Lord challenged me about my family. And the Lord showed me that I wasn't to worry about my family. I wasn't to let my unconverted loved ones cast me down. Because ultimately, if I didn't let go of them, that they would pull me down and they would discourage me so that I would, wouldn't be able to be used by God. And God showed me that years ago. And there's situations at times we have to hand over to God. And, you know, in this situation, as we're reading in Esther tonight, you know, Esther was told, you know, the next point here is for time. S for Sean. She's shown in a difficult situation. And then, then there's a time to reveal that light. You know, Esther was told not to reveal her true identity. At the beginning of the chapter two, it says, Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that they should not show it. You know, there was a reason for, for Esther not to reveal her true identity at that time. You know that, do you know that um, Mordecai's name actually means a warrior? Not, not, a, not a warrior, not a warrior. Ooh, not a warrior, but a warrior. And Mordecai had obviously done this under the guidance of the Lord. God had guided him to tell her not to reveal her true identity at this time. And, you know, any, anybody who's, who's a strategist in battle, they have to know how to work, things, how, how, to, how to come in at certain times and, so, and, and, and 
how to approach certain battles in certain different ways. David had to come before the Lord at times and ask him how to approach the Philistines. And God had to tell him, you need to wait, you need to do this, you need to do that. And we've got to do that as well. Esther hadn't just couldn't just reveal herself. And, and later on in, in the and it also says also in verse 20 of the same ch in the same chapter, Esther had not yet showed her kindred, nor her people as Mordecai had charged her, but Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. She obviously knew that Mordecai had the best intentions for her. And you know, God's got the best intentions for us. You know, sometimes, sometimes we would like to see people saved. We would like to see people coming to know the Lord. Sometimes we, we maybe think that maybe we've missed opportunities to preach the gospel or to tell somebody about Christ. But you know something? See, if it's in your heart to be available for God, God will make those opportunities available to us. And he will make them at the right time so that we can be used by God in that, in that situation. But we've got to trust God and realize that God's in control. He's the sovereign Lord. He knows exactly what's happening. He knows what's in people's hearts. He knows the right time. And it would, and obviously, when Mordecai comes to Esther in chapter 4, he says to her, Now, I know you've not revealed yourself up until this time, but you know something he says? Because, the, because Haman has plotted against the Jews, Mordecai in chapter 4 rents his clothes in sackcloth and he comes to the, the king's gate. Now, this was something that wasn't, that wasn't acceptable because no one, as it, as it said, was supposed to enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. But anyway, Mordecai is wanting to, wanting, ultimately wants Esther to know or to get in contact with him to find out why he's in this situation, why he's, bring, why he's, in, why he's in sackcloth and ashes. So she, she makes a request and ultimately Mordecai tells her that Haman is plotted against the Jews. You know, the devil's plotting against the Christian church every day. Different ways to overcome the people of God, different ways to pull us down. And in this prayer meeting tonight, you maybe feel as though we'll have a difficult day. And he's been successful in, my, in trying to discourage me today. But we've got to shrug that off. We've got to put that off and realize that this, at this time, God needs us. God needs us in this prayer meeting tonight. God needs us to be able to be used by God in this prayer meeting. There's people who need prayer tonight. There's a nation without Christ. There's this whole land we live in tonight is in darkness, as John preached last week. But, but Mordecai comes and challenges her and says, I'll read this from verse 12. And they told to Mordecai, Esther's words. I don't have time to read all these. Then Mordecai uh, commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. You know, sometimes we might think that, well, if God's sovereign, God will God will work it all out. We don't need to pray tonight. Mordecai is saying, no, no, that's not the way it works. There's such a thing as man's responsibility. And God will challenge us on that at times. God will say, look, that's true. I am a sovereign God. But in my sovereignty, I, I use I use my people to work out my plan at my particular time. And he goes on to say, for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether they'll come to the kingdom for such a time as this? You know, brothers and sisters, I don't know if there's ever been a darker time. It, there probably has. I know that in, in, in every generation, there's dark times for the people of God. That, that, that goes without saying. But we know, we know tonight that we live in a nation that once loved the gospel, once had churches nearly in every corner of our city. This is a different nation tonight. We're living in a totally different city. Glasgow, East Coast, it's a totally different atmosphere out there. And it, it's totally different. There's darkness everywhere you look. And this is the time we need to pray and believe 
for God to move in power, for belief to God, for God to move. And you know, Esther had to come to that place. It says, she says that in, in response to this, uh, then Esther said in verse six, go gather together all the Jews and present in Shushan and fast ye for me and eat neither eat nor drink three days also and my maidens will also fast likewise. And so will I go into, into the king, which is not according to the law. She wasn't permitted just to come according to her when she wanted to come. She had to come according to the king's demand or commanded to come. Just like at the very beginning when, when Ahasuerus commanded uh, Vashti to come, but she refused to come. It was according to the king. But you know something? God, who is the supreme king, has commanded that we come in the name of Jesus, that we can come into his presence in prayer tonight as the people of God, not according to the law. No, no, because we, we were never sons of Levi. We were never part of the priesthood, but we are part of a new priesthood tonight, the priesthood of all believers through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have, we have that access through Christ tonight. And there's a time to come. You know, God, God says to Gen, in Genesis 18, you know, when he promised a son to Abraham and Abraham and Sarah laughed because it, God said, Abraham said to God, ah, but I'm, I'm beyond the ability to have a child. And Sarah thought the same. It even says that Sarah in the tent laughed when God said she shall have a son. But you know something tonight? With God, nothing's impossible. The, the time that the doctors have told Ken Kenneth that his mum might have to be in that coma for that breathing. God could shorten that with to, to a day or two days. God could shorten that. God can change that completely. It's not, it's not according to men. We're dealing with the supreme God, sovereign God tonight. We're not dealing with, with doctors who try their best and use the best apparatus and do the best that they can. We're, we're coming to pray to a God who can do all things. And that's the, that's, the, that's the confidence we have tonight. That we're not coming to the best physicians that this world can give us, the best doctors to do with it. We're coming to God Almighty, who can change the situation, who can change this nation. And that's the faith and confidence we come with. You see, she's not going to come according to the law. She's coming through faith. That she's going to trust that she's got, going to get an entrance with the king. And that's the way we have to come tonight, that God will give us that entrance. God will listen, hear our prayers through the help of the Holy Spirit, and God will answer our prayers. And very quickly, the apparel, it says in chapter 5, now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on that royal apparel. You know, you can look at this in many ways, but you know, tonight, you know, that I believe that, that, that royal apparel, yes, I'm sure it was all splendid, it was beautiful apparel, but for us tonight as Christians, we have to put on the armour of light. We have to clothe ourselves with the whole armour of God. Because when we come into God's presence, we have to come in and we have to shine. We have to, we have to be radiant before God. You think God, after saving us and after coming to us and giving us the light of the gospel, that God wants a damp squib to come into his presence tonight? No, God wants us to come in faith. Believing God, trusting that what God says he can do, he can do. God wants us to come in faith and believe and trust him and come and make our petitions clear and plain and without reservation, without any note of unbelief, but through the enablement of the Holy Spirit, we have to trust God. And, you know, we know all these things. We know all these things. We all know these things. It's okay hearing about it. It's a different thing doing it. It's a completely different thing doing about it. You all, you all, we all know people who like to talk about things. Talk about this, talk about that, we'll talk about this, we'll have a discussion about that. No, not a lot of people want to say, right, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. No, no, we'll let you talk about it and we'll just listen. They don't want A lot of people don't want to get involved. Well, Esther decided, right, that's it, I need to get in here. I need to get right into this. It's now time for me to get involved in this situation. I've held my peace up to now, and this is the right time. And this is, this is the time for us, brothers and sisters, tonight. 
to get involved in prayer, to pray for my neighbor, to pray for my loved ones, to pray for those who need help tonight. Many people prayed for you. Many people prayed for me that God would save you. People prayed for us. And people are, set, people are lying in beds tonight who need prayer. People are in different, difficult situations who need prayer tonight. And God needs us to put on the whole armor of God. Not let any distractions come in, not let any thoughts of negativity come in, but be focused on God's purpose tonight to pray. And very quickly, I don't want to spend a lot, any more time, just a couple of minutes. R, A for a pal and R for reigning. You know, she came into the king, and when the king saw her, the king beckoned her to come in. And you know, see, when we come in prayer tonight, do you know something? There's one thing God will not do. He will not say to you, if you're a child of God, you can't come in tonight. If you're a child of God, you, you've been given access through the Holy Spirit, through the Lord Jesus, the blood of the, the blood of the, the Lord Jesus Christ has given you access and confidence tonight. The writer to the Hebrews says, with boldness, we can come into the holiest of all through the blood of Christ. And it's that confidence that when we come to God tonight, God will say, I've heard your prayers. I don't want to hear them anymore. God won't say that. God will say, come in. God, will, God, you've got to see this by faith. That when you come to God tonight, God will hold out the golden scepter to you and will accept you into his presence through the Lord Jesus Christ because he is reigning. You see, the devil ultimately Haman would be destroyed. He would he would build gallows to, to try and hang uh, Mordecai on, but he ultimately will be hanged on the gallows that he built himself. And you know, sometimes when Satan overstretches himself, when Satan steps too far, then God steps in and says, no, I'm not allowing it. And you know, brothers and sisters, many a time, I'm sure in the Christian church, people of God have stepped in when it's been so difficult and prayed to God and God has stepped in and says, no further. Think of the when Moses' back was against the Red Sea and there was no way out. And God says, don't worry, I'll make a way through the sea. I'll open it up. Put your rod over the sea and the sea will open up. And it's the same for us tonight, brothers and sisters. We've got to see that God is greater than the opposition tonight, greater than the obstacles, greater than the things. You know, what is the gospel all about tonight? The gospel's all about, we have been we were once captives, but now we are made free through the Lord Jesus Christ. We're no longer servants to sin, but we're servants unto God. And it's that service we want to do to God for God tonight to pray for this nation, to pray that God will be glorified, to pray that our brothers and sisters will be made well and strong and, and, and restored to full health. That includes all those who have this, Francis, others in vision. Regardless, we pray that God will deliver every one of them and deliver them from this virus, that God, God can take it and remove it from them. I would just pray, I just pray tonight that these, I know that you've heard all these things before, but you know what happened? Ultimately, Haman would be hanged. The Jewish people, the Jews at that time, would be given the authority to go and oppose those who, who were going to kill them. And ultimately, they would get the victory. And brothers and sisters, we've got to believe tonight, the devil's been defeated. We're on the side that has won. We're on the side that's won tonight. The devil's no one. God has won the victory through Jesus Christ tonight. We've got to believe that. And grab hold of that tonight and trust God. And I just pray these things would be a, a blessing to you.